Hi everyone, it's Friday. Indeed, it's the very last Friday of the month of August. It's the 28th day. We're glad to have you with us and glad the weekend is here. The weather may be coinciding with a little rest and relaxation throughout some of it, as far as I know and hope for you all and myself included, probably not myself. Nevertheless, clouds and showers are still in the forecast, still not looking at any serious rainfall to cause any serious issues for the viewing area as it relates to, of course, Tropical Depression Laura. But we have that to discuss. We as well have serious auto accidents to report to you tonight. One happened after a man who was arrested just yesterday by the same sheriff's deputy was behind the wheel of a vehicle who tried to flee that deputy earlier today. We have a case from another county which involves a police chase, a high speed pursuit over 100 miles an hour on a motorcycle this man arrested for those charges related to that case and also executed or served with a warrant in regards to a manslaughter charge for giving another man who died fentanyl, that man dying from an overdose from the drugs. We'll also have, you know, it's just sad. She says it several times in the interview, but it's sad. A local church broken into last night. An arrest was made as um, the suspect literally came back to the scene of the crime and walked upon police. Literally, I'll have all of that and much more before I leave you for the weekend. So, most everyone in the state of Kentucky, parents, students, staff, of course, the Kentucky schools, and most everyone else as well, are waiting to see what the Kentucky Department of Education was going to do with their meeting that was planned for today in regards to, of course, the Kentucky High School Athletic Association supporting sports to go on this fall. Governor Bashir not going up against or challenging that decision. And then when the KDE today, or this week, so they were meeting today, I think everyone, those same parents, students, coaches, and staff, assumed that there may be a decision coming, an overturn, if you will, of the Kentucky High School Athletic Association by the Kentucky Department of Education. Well, I watched much of that meeting earlier today uh, held by the Kentucky Department of Education, and one of the very first things they made clear was that that in no way was the intent of today's meeting and was not an agenda item. They said they met earlier today to simply hear more from KHSAA Director Julian Tackett about the plan he has for sports to continue in Kentucky. Now, there were a lot of other folks in the meeting, of course, um, and one of those was Dr. Stephen Stack, who was, of course, in opposition of the Kentucky High School Athletics Association's decision, as he has been, of course, from the onset, saying that, for example, he chose wrestling um, to use for an example that if two people are on the map, one has covid at the beginning of the match, both will have it most certainly at the end. However, the Kentucky Department of Education, after taking in all of the statements and testimony, if you will, even though that's not the proper term, into consideration, says they are going to accept the Kentucky High School Athletic Association's decision, and they're going to hope for the best. One member of the KDE saying playing sports not only benefits their physical health, but it's also a social outlet and touches rather teaches the students the value of teamwork and an outlet where they find lifelong friends and mentors. Now, during this entire meeting, they largely uh, discussed, as has, was brought before them, the point to be made that how can you have sports and not have in-class, in-person classroom teaching. Uh, that was discussed and addressed on many, many different occasions throughout the four hours or so that the meeting lasted, at the end of which there was a vote that was taken, it was unanimous, 10 to 0, to develop a written communication between the Kentucky Department of Education and the Kentucky High School Athletic Association to look for options for those fall sports that are considered to be high contact. But as of now, there is going to be a fall sports season in Kentucky's schools. That means cross country, uh, volleyball, soccer, for those who have those sports, can begin on the seventh day of September, and football will still kick, still kick off on September the 11th. We'll be talking more about that, of course, next week. Also on the subject of schools, Johnson County School Superintendent Tom Cochran today has stated that classes will begin in person in Johnson County schools now. The date moved up to October the 12th. They will still start this week, next week on the 1st of September, with virtual learning, and they will continue that through almost the middle 
of October. That is the new start date for in-person or in-classroom learning in Johnson County Schools. I've got an update for you from the Community Day Foundation. You know, that deadline is coming up to, for the last day for you to donate online or at the Sagersville National Bank this Monday, and we're still thousands and thousands short. However, some good news, in order to get all the late last-minute donations that have been coming in some, thank you so much, they have extended it to Tuesday, September the 8th. So I've got another week to keep reminding you, pleading with you, and begging you to go to BGCF dot giving fuel dot com slash community day and donate all donations matched one dollar with two dollars and then of course all those funds distributed evenly and 100 percent of them to our local participating nonprofits. so the window's still open please donate if indeed you can at all anything will help so with that there's been a couple of auto accidents making the headlines tonight both on rain, slick, and roads. However, the first that we uh, begin with tonight was not necessarily due to rain, slick, and roads, but more so because of a high rate of speed. After seeing a man behind the wheel of a vehicle this afternoon, just before noon here in McGoffin County at the red light there, red light number one at the Catholic Church intersection of the Mountain Parkway, after a McGoffin County Sheriff's deputy saw a man behind the wheel, a man that he had just arrested yesterday for public intoxication and was aware that he did not have a valid driver's license, Deputy Jonathan Holbrook turned and tried to make a traffic stop on that vehicle, but the driver fled and then later crashed on Route 30 in front of the county garage. After the officer turned on that vehicle that you're about to see get a little closer here to the left of your screen, it fled west on the Mountain Parkway, exiting on to Route 30, and then in the sharp curve in front of the county garage at an estimated 85 miles per hour on very slick roads after the rains that we had seen. The driver lost control, hit the hillside for well over 100 feet or so, and it came to rest as you see there. Deputies approached the vehicle and found Jamie Gamble behind the wheel of that vehicle just as they had seen him behind the wheel of the vehicle in Salyersville. Gamble was arrested by the same deputy just yesterday for public intoxication after a 911 call about a vehicle sitting in the vet clinic parking lot in the Conley Farm. A passenger in that vehicle failed field sobriety tests. Actually, that man and then another fem female, I do believe, appeared to be passed out in that car in the clinic parking lot. This man was arrested, Jamie Gamble, 43, of Sagersville yesterday for public intoxication of drugs and, of course, was released sometime later and today now faces charges, we believe, of fleeing and evading police, no operator's license, and other counts. He would have been live flighted as he was unrestrained and his head hit the windshield, according to what I saw at the scene. However, there was a no-fly situation due to the weather conditions, and he was taken by ground ambulance to an area hospital we believe to be cited for various serious charges at a later time. The second auto accident making headlines tonight due to the roads, which indeed were slick. And if you're traveling 460 west towards Morgan County, you know those curves that are dangerous and treacherous whenever it rains, and that's what happened here. Uh, the red vehicle, as I understand, traveling towards McGough Morgan County, rather, lost traction in the curve and struck the gray car, uh, and then the red car went on and struck the guardrail. The gray car, as you can see, going several feet over the embankment. There were three occupants, including the driver, that were out upon arrival of emergency personnel. The vehicle rolled at least two times, but all were out and had climbed the embankment because they had their seat belts on and suffered minor injuries at most they did go to the hospital by ambulance to be checked out we're unsure if the driver of the maroon car went via family to be checked out for what was also considered to be non-life-threatening injuries at the time more headlines in just a moment
Oh, it's what a lot of you have been waiting for. They're back, but only for a limited time. Loaded potato wedges at your Sagers of Elise famous recipe. That's right, our famous hand-cut homemade potato wedges smothered in cheddar cheese, real crispy bacon, topped with either sour cream or ranch, your choice. And they're still only $2.49 with tax. Get them while you can at your Sagersville Lee's. Connolly Tire in Staffordsville is now a proud partner of Rough Country for all of your suspension and lift kit applications. And you can always go to ConnollyTire.net to get the latest offers. Like right now, $100 when you buy a set of Mickey Thompsons, $100 on a set of Continentals, and many, many more summer deals, including $35 computer diagnostics. That's Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. Car accidents don't stop. Accidents at work don't stop. Disability and SSI cases don't stop. Your legal needs and concerns don't stop for the coronavirus, and neither does McFarland and Tinker. They are open, able to schedule appointments per CDC guidelines, and always available for telephone and video conferences. Please, be safe, be smart, stay home, and don't let your legal needs fall victim to the pandemic. Call McFarland and Tinker and let them take care of them for you. I'm covering an arrest of a Martin County man tonight who sits jailed in the Big Sandy in Johnson County. He was involved in a high-speed police pursuit as well on a motorcycle over 100 miles an hour. And after he was arrested, he was served with an outstanding warrant in effect in his name for several days now in regards to the charge of manslaughter and other serious counts related to an overdose death of another man. As for the arrest, Wednesday of this week, a Martin County Sheriff's deputy, while patrolling, saw a vehicle, a motorcycle, being operated by this man, 27-year-old Christopher Newsom of DeBoard, failing to issue a signal at the lovely zip zone. And when the officer tried to make a traffic stop, he took off on the motorcycle uh, and fled in excess of 105 miles per hour at some points in a 35-mile-per-hour zone after apprehension. The suspect saying that 105 miles per hour was just as fast as the motorcycle was he that he was on would go, and that he ultimately pulled off the roadway because he knew he was unable to elude authorities any longer. He had in his possession a clear crystal-like substance that he said was meth. Upon his arrest for fleeing and evading in the first degree, trafficking and possession, he was also executed with a warrant for manslaughter pertaining to a case being investigated by Trooper Thompson with Post 9 of the Kentucky State Police, where he was charged with manslaughter in the second degree and trafficking in the first degree for carfentanil or fentanyl derivatives. Trooper Dustin Thompson, in his citation, says that last month, around the end of July, over the course, over the course of two or three days in Martin County, Newsom committed the offense of second-degree manslaughter when he wantonly caused the death of a Ryan Scott Markham by giving him fentanyl, which of course is deadly in the tiniest of increments. Newsom admitting that he gave, I believe it is, three grams of fentanyl to the victim approximately three days before he overdosed. Coming up next in about 60 seconds, I'll take you to a Magoffa County Church, which was the target of thieves, at least one, arrested thus far since I saw you last. We'll take a look at the damages left behind in just a second. So I've got a couple of stories today that I've been working on throughout most of the afternoon. Um, both sad, both which have brought many tears to two local women for reasons that you're about to hear. Uh, but two stories as well that they hope uh, one will inspire you that the other might have some sort of a positive outcome in the end. So let's let's begin with the tears shed and the hearts that were broke over a senseless invasion and destruction left behind by at least one man, we believe more than one, who stumbled back to one of them, the crime scene this morning, to get the bicycle that he had left beside the road after he had robbed and vandalized the Cow Creek Church of God. It was there this morning that I talked with the church's pastor, Miss Arbadella Reed, about what had happened and how she came to hear about this from a neighbor in the area this morning. And as Arbadella and her son Corey went to the church to see what had happened, 
They found along the roadway items that had been stolen from the church and just strewn by the side of the road. They found a bicycle. The reason for that they would learn a little bit later. And then they would find the thousands of dollars in damages and loss, which is what I would call the insult added to the injury. Not just the financial burden that this will place on an already small but very dedicated house of worship, but that this was actually done at the hands of those the church had helped recently, and that Arbadella said would help again. I guess the worst part is when we came in and saw where the, the pulpit and th just about everything up there was destroyed. Everything's thrown on the floor, the PA system, and and. Excuse me, and the uh, mics and everything, and it's it's sad. I mean, really, it's sad. I mean, Corey and I picked up garbage yesterday. six hours. Yesterday, twenty-eight bags of garbage we picked up. Just um, garbage worth your own coverage. Yeah, and uh, just have money to pay the bills during the winter months because Rick, we're a small church and the most people we have is elderly and uh, that's the reason we haven't had church lately because people sick they've been sick one had cancer and and surgery and and different things and and we try to be safe and I don't know, I guess it, it's just sad that, that uh, but uh, it all boils down to drugs. Anybody sane would not do what was done here. They would have come in, we've had things stolen before years ago. They'd come in and take our conditioner, that's all they'd take, or they'd take a, a, a something else but they never destroy nothing. It was never, and they've shot in the church three or four times, but that was back years ago. And, uh, but we have struggled. But this is just a minor thing. It could be worse. And I pray that the ones that did it get help. because apparently they need help. And uh, I, I really feel sorry for them. I really do. In the end, there were only a few items that were actually taken from the church. There was a guitar that was recovered by a resident that found it nearby that had been damaged. These two items, uh, Part of the PA system and a heater were found lying down next to the road. Some other miscellaneous items as well found scattered about. This is a shirt that is believed to have been left behind by one of the people who robbed the church. So far, only one has been arrested and the investigation continues by the Sheriff's Department to find out if indeed there were in fact more people involved. This, the bicycle that at least one of them rode to the church, and left lying as you see here before going inside. Ironically, however, as the Sheriff's Department arrived and Deputy Jonathan Holbrook was actually documenting the bicycle, one of the men believed to have robbed the church came back to get his bicycle, as Arbadella described, still heavily under the influence of whatever drugs he was on. That being 37-year-old Curtis James, who had been staying on Cow Creek, who has been charged with tampering with physical evidence, public intoxication of drugs, receiving stolen property, possession of a controlled substance in third degree, possession of drug paraphernalia, and he was also served with an outstanding warrant. A man that Arbadella was actually familiar with. All that we can do is, is, is pray. Pray is all we can do. And uh, I still pray for him, and, and matter of fact, I just took food to him this past week. <laughs> so that's okay. That's our job as, as pastors and ministers and, and lay people is to help the people. You know, 
and I'll continue to help. The arrest citation that I've just obtained for Curtis James goes into a little more detail about his apprehension. The sheriff's deputy says that as he was taking pictures of that bicycle that was left behind at the scene, he saw James walk up, saw him trying to hide from the officer, throwing a can of pop down, a can of pop that was believed to have been stolen from the church. The officer approached him. He failed all field sobriety tests, and the officer then spoke with another individual who gave him a statement that the man, James or Curtis James, rather, was seen carrying items that belonged to her over $500, and he was also charged with the possession of a controlled substance charge because after being searched in his billfold, there was a clear bag with what appeared to be Xanax and gabapentin inside the investigation into who else may have been in that church and assisted or was complicit in the burglary and the vandalism is ongoing so the other story that i've been working on today it tells what has driven a, a local lady to honor kentuckians that we've lost during the pandemic including her own brother At 10 o'clock, just like church bells and others all across Kentucky, this bell in Sagersville has been ringing for lives lost due to COVID-19. Every morning since April, except for the morning of her brother's funeral, this bell has been rung, with tears shed nearly every time by a Sagersville lady who, since losing her brother to COVID-19, says that she's now dedicating its chime to another cause. The history of this bell, before her, how it came to be in her life and at her home, and for who she still rings this bell every morning is a must-see story. It's one that I have started this morning, one that I do not have completed, but one that I encourage you to be here with me for next week. National Dog Day was earlier this week, and I've got a little pic I'm going to share with you on that note in an effort to just leave you maybe with a little bit of a smile this Friday evening, as I try to always do. Sometimes I often find hard to find the material to do so. Nevertheless, I'll share that with you in just a few seconds right now. Uh, a couple of quick announcements, including a birthday on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau Community Calendar. Yes, this birthday wish phoned in says, please wish... Sue Holiday, my sister, the happiest of 65th birthdays. Love your brother Terry and Tanya and Trenton. Happy 61st birthday. Sue Holiday, happy birthday to you, Sue. Happy birthday. A couple of reminders. I have one reminder, one new announcement. I just don't have the new announcement typed in on the calendar. The reminder is the McGoffin County Head Start program is offering virtual classes. Call 349-3488 to find out more. I just got word that the North McGoffin Elementary Site-Based Council is having a special meeting this coming Monday at noon in the school's library. Everyone is welcome to attend, and you're always welcome to use our calendar for announcements like these and birthdays and anniversaries, too. Going on to this Friday's funeral services, a quick reminder of services to be held tomorrow in honor of 68-year-old Larry Dean Adams of Dry Bread, who passed away earlier this week. A memorial service is to be held tomorrow at the Sagersville Funeral Home beginning at 2 o'clock. The family will welcome friends tomorrow from noon until 2 up until the time of the memorial service to begin. Also in funeral service announcements this evening, a change to be made to services that we had last night in honor of 37-year-old Matthew Curtis Moore of Sagersville, the son of Tim Arnett and Anna Lou Caldwell-Smith. He's survived as well by his sons, Matthew Christian Moore and Isaiah Michael, and daughters Alexa Stella Lachey Moore and Monique Danielle Moore, brother Robert Ray Poe, and sisters Rosie Gullett, Donna Russell, Alice Stevens, and Kathy Cooper. Funeral services have been set for this weekend beginning at 1 on Sunday from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. The family will welcome friends after 11 on Sunday morning prior to funeral services. Come to Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville and get your prescriptions filled. Your over-the-counter medications and immune system boosters all from the safety and comfort of your own vehicle. 
either in their drive through or with their new curbside service. You can also call ahead or just download the My GNP app, that's Good Neighbor Pharmacy, and refill and manage your prescriptions right from your device, helping you and yours stay healthy and safe. Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville, 349-4400. It's hard to describe the t-shirt lines and looks in right now at the seasonal shop, but I'm gonna try. Two of them are made right here in KY, Ridge and Holler, because you know, in Kentucky, you're always in one or the other and both are always beautiful. Just check these designs out. The other is Yonder and it's made in Pikeville and it's just as cool and creative and all Kentucky. Definitely something there to appeal to everyone and the ever-popular Turnrow brand, also at the Seasonal Shop for all fans of anything farming. And you can come into the shop and experience the magic of perfectly chilled drinks for regular and slim cans, regular or even wine bottles, cups, and more. It's the Cadillac of koozies by Brewmate, all colors and styles in stock right now at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. Summer heat and no AC make for a miserable drive. But don't sweat it. Call Black Smoke Performance in Sagersville for inspection, diagnostics, and repair by qualified technicians with the latest technology and equipment. Don't suffer in the summer heat. Get your air conditioning fixed today at Black Smoke Performance. Now for your daily COVID update, locally and statewide, we'll begin with the state of Kentucky not holding a personal Press release or conference today, the governor did issue a press release via which he says we have 700 and new, 792 new cases of the coronavirus in Kentucky today. The good news is that our positivity rate, he says, is continuing to decline down to an even 4.5% today. We've been under 5% for a few days now. 45 is the lowest that we have seen in quite some time. However, there were also eight lives lost in the last 24 hours, he says. Our total now, 918 Kentuckians who died as a result of the coronavirus per state data. The youngest of those among those eight deaths today, a 58-year-old woman from Taylor County and a 69-year-old woman from Barron County. Locally here in McGoffin County, our public health director, Pete Shepard, just gave me some numbers a few moments ago. Another confirmed case here in McGoffin County today. However, one today means that we are still along that pattern of averaging one a day for the past seven days instead of two a day the seven days prior to that. That's good news. I hope it continues along that trend and follows that pattern. This case today, according to Shepard, is the fourth case related to an individual from Johnson County uh, via a cleaning service who's traveled to McGoffin County cleaning in various homes or businesses, I'm unsure, but four cases related to that one individual from that county, two in one home, one in another, and then this fourth one in another home. It's a total of 72 cases now confirmed here in McGoffin County. Nine said to be in isolation. Twelve tests were still pending as of air time. All right, that's almost it. A little special pick. I'm just going to throw it in there. I, of course, it's my babies, so of course I thought it was cute. Maybe you will too. I'll share that with you after your Licking Valley RECC Outlook, which has still what we've been expecting for your weekend. And that's the potential for some rain and some stormy weather. In fact, western Kentucky, just a few counties in the central Kentucky area under a tornado watch until about 8. Nothing like that for us as of right now. Uh, that watch area might make its way a little more eastward. But as you can see, it is mostly the western part of the state and central Kentucky there, as you can see, uh, going up through Broadhead and McKee there, getting in some pretty good storms. So you will want to keep your eye on the weather, certainly for the next several hours and during the overnight, as we're going to see some unstable conditions. Now, this could result in damaging winds. We're still talking about rainfall. Still to total, I think, for most of the viewing area, maybe up to two inches but it just takes one of those serious downpours to really put down a lot of rain in a little bit of time and 
You do that in a flood prone area and you all we've lived here long enough. We know those areas and we know those problems associated with flash flooding. So nevertheless, keep your eye on things just like this for the remainder of the evening and into your weekend. Showers and thunderstorms are likely this evening and we are going to pick up maybe a half an inch of rain tonight unless you get under a thunderstorm maybe another half an inch tomorrow to three quarters of an inch on average and then after we go through tonight for your weekend uh, we're still going to see temperatures after a 71 degree low tonight we should top out at about 84 for your saturdays southerly winds tonight unless you're under a thunderstorm five to seven on average tomorrow though six to 16 miles per hour and for your saturday showers and thunderstorms anytime from 10 in the morning on uh, and again about a half an inch of rain tomorrow uh, some more rain wind still continuing up to 16 18 miles per hour tomorrow night with the exception of thunderstorm areas and activity. Lows in the low 60s tomorrow night and Sunday night. Daytime highs Sunday back off to just below 80 at 79. And then Sunday, things will start to calm down. Patchy fog in the morning, mostly sunny and 79. In fact, we should see a mostly dry day and sunny day on your Sunday. That 30% chance of showers really isn't until technically 1 a.m. or so Monday morning when the next round of activity rolls in. So a brief break or a preve Sunday, and then it's back to the similar scenario that we've been in for quite some time. We will start off next week in the low 80s with mostly cloudy skies on your Monday and a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms throughout the entire course of your Monday. And then we're going to stay in the low 80s, slowly making their way up to about 85 or so by the end of next week. But nevertheless, more clouds than sun for next week. Again, 82 on Tuesday and a 50% chance of showers. 84 on Wednesday, partly sunny, but a 40% chance of showers. And pretty much the same scenario for next Thursday, too. And lastly, I'll just leave you with what I thought was an adorable little pick that doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. National Dog Day was earlier this week, and I observed it with a morning bath with an audience and a picture that I caught that really doesn't, like I said, need much of an explanation. It's just happy. <laughs> Enjoy. Have a good weekend. Have a safe weekend. Keep your eye on this evening's weather conditions. They are going to be changing, possibly, at a moment's notice, with storms possibly rolling through the area. And I hope to see you back here Monday with some more happy pics, maybe like these. Good night. Thank you all for watching.